Hello, and welcome to my channel. This is the start of a new series where I talk about various discourses and the takes that come up around them. I don't have a name for this series yet, but if you have any ideas, please sound off in the comments below. Anyway, let's get into it. So there's this tweet from Big Joel. Whenever I read the Sea Lion comic, which the online bad faith debate tactic is named after, I'm just like, bro, this guy had it coming. I don't like sea lions, eat my ass. Why do you believe that? The sea lion has a right to some answers, to be honest. The replies to this tweet have been living in my head rent-free. A year and a half old tweet from a YouTuber about a nine-year-old webcomic. Yes, I'm a very normal person with very normal thoughts. So the focus of this series is going to be on other people's takes, but I thought I'd summarize my take here. I get that this comic is supposed to be about gamers and MRAs, but I think it does a very poor job of communicating this. Specifically, using sea lions as a metaphor for a non-immutable characteristic, like being a gamer or MRA, makes very little sense when sea lion is a immutable characteristic. Obviously, it's a metaphor, but the metaphor is, at best, messy. Additionally, the woman in the comic says, I don't mind most marine mammals, but sea lions? I could do without sea lions. Which, like, sounds exactly how conservatives talk about minorities. And then that reframes the whole, oh, they're bad because they complain about us saying they're bad thing, because that's another thing that conservatives love to say about minorities. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, I just wanted to give a couple disclaimers. The first one, these are just people with some funky takes. They're not bad people. Don't go after them over two-year-old tweets. Uh, the other one is that um, I'm not going to try to make any too broad claims about society from a bunch of two like tweets. Oh, you know what? Just realized I wrote this before I wrote the rest of the video. Anyway, let's get into it. The first category of takes is people who are baffled, baffled, that anyone could read this as anything other than being about gamers or MRAs. Here's a couple examples. On the left, we've got an example of someone who thinks that it's obvious from, quote, context, that the cartoon is about dickheads on the internet. The main issue I have about this is that it's literally a cartoon about a sea lion in an 18th century Victorian setting. There is no context in the comic, unless by context you mean was published in 2014. On the right here, we have someone who thinks that you should read the addendum that the author wrote, and uh, I really don't have much to say about this apart from typically comics don't require addenda. I, I feel like that's actually an argument in favor of the original post. So the second category here is people who think that being polite in a debate is not just not required, but actively bad. Um, so on the left here, we've got uh, someone saying that, you know, you should say shut up to someone rather than saying you know, I disagree politely. And um, I don't know where people are getting this from. Like, I, I get that the requirement for someone to be polite when they're being attacked for their ethnicity or whatever can be corrosive. But the idea that it's actively bad to not do that, I think, is weird. Uh, on the right here, we've got some very similar take uh, about how this is a dishonest strategy to try to, to trip people up. And yeah, debates are full of dishonest strategies. That's just how it works. There's also people who seem to have the take the sea lion is bad because it's being annoying when it's defending itself. And it feels odd that nobody's getting this as circular, and also a really common claim by reactionaries. Uh, I'm just going to keep showing these. There's quite a few of them. This is probably the most common kind of response. It's really weird, honestly. I, are people not aware of this trope? Like, it's a really common trope, to the point that sometimes it's the main argument made against certain groups. Like, Christian conservatives will routinely say, I'm fine with gay people, but oppose the gay agenda, that kind of thing. So the last category of takes is the one that really sticks with me. It's people who seem to be stuck in the very specific and narrow discourse of 2014. There were a few kind of comments where it's clear that some people read, I could do without sea lines, and immediately and unequivocally read it as an analogy for ironic misandry. And, like, that is a thing that happens. But, okay, like, I get that I'm two years late to this, but ironic misandry is n very much no longer a major thing in left spaces, and the relative salience of stuff like transphobia has increased quite a bit. That was true even in 2021. I'm generally mostly okay with the whole ironic misandry thing, but I think it's probably worth at least some reflection on how the heuristics this arms you with lead you to, like, forget about actual bigotry. So here, for example, we've got someone who's come to the conclusion that folks are allowed to vent and say they dislike some kinds of people without getting harassed. And sure, they believe that what's going on here is that it's about ironic misandry or something like that. But I think that it's a little odd that you're willing to abstract the point out that much, which I don't think it holds once you abstract it out that much. In practice, that covers a lot of 
effectively eliminationist rhetoric and saying that people should be allowed to say it without being criticized. Like, okay, I get where those people are coming from, but in my opinion, it's kind of bad that a lot of people see a cartoon version of something that might or might not be ironic bigotry and assume that not only is it justified, but that's the only possible reading. So I guess I broke a couple of my own rules there, gave my own take, and I also overgeneralized from a couple of two like posts. Uh, however, uh, to compensate you, enjoy one of the takes that has been living rent-free in my head for the last year and a half. So I'm just going to leave this on here so you can read it, but to me the part that's just been living in my head rent-free is the idea that it's okay not to like an entire species. For instance, I don't like dogs, and kind of the idea that like the concept of not being okay to like an entire species isn't contingent on the fact that that species isn't people. Like, it, it isn't animals that can talk and have feelings and emotions that they can kind of be hurt by your speech. And I don't know, I, I know Jack Saint did a whole video on talking dog movies, and I think that this kind of ties into that, but I don't know, it's just so weird to me that the ways that people's moral intuitions just hit a wall when they get into weird analogies. Anyway, completely unrelated to the discourse around this comic, but it's just been in my head rent free the whole time. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, so if you have any comments about more or less anything about the presentation, content, whatever, make sure to put them down below or just at me on Twitter. And uh, also, I think that um, if you had a name for the series, let me know. That would be really helpful. And uh, also, um, yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions for what I should do next, uh, various other topics and discourses that uh, you think might be interesting to see me cover. So.